so, Neil, a, a huge and alarming part of, of these new laws uh, that that we're seeing being passed is the nullification aspect of them. You know, the putting in place of mechanisms that would enable uh, partisan officials to overturn results they don't like. You know, it, it's in reality, it's, it's pretty tough to out organize if the results could be overturned. Right. 100%. These laws are, are scary, Michael. They literally say that the state legislature can undo an election and put in whomever they want. Like, that's what's going on in the bill in Arizona right now. And other places, they're just making it much harder to vote. And all of these things are as silly, frankly, as checking under your kids' beds for monsters. I mean, the monsters aren't there in the first place, and you can't really convince them otherwise. But there's this bogeyman of voter fraud and so on. And you know, they, Republicans are not even willing to fund election security. They just want to cry about the last election and pretend like there was some fraud when over 60 plus courts have said to the contrary. So, you know, it's a quixotic attempt, but ultimately it just reflects the fact they're afraid of democracy now. They don't have the votes, so they want to suppress the vote. Yeah, and, and that suppression of the vote uh, is is really what has moved members of Congress uh, to to take extraordinary measures. So, for example, Tara, after she was detained last week, Congresswoman Betty uh, pointed out uh, the difference in how January 6 rioters were treated, uh, and it's a striking comparison, uh, and it gets us to the issue at the heart of these restrictive laws, how black and brown people will be disproportionately affected by them. How do you see that narrative? When you have, you know, folks storming uh, the, you know, the Congress, none of them arrested, none of them handcuffed, none of them put in zip ties, right? Congresswoman, you know, is trying to, you know, just get some action on getting good, healthy legislation passed for voters, and there she goes in zip ties off to jail. Right. I, I mean, we all know that there is definitely a difference in how uh, both those crowds were treated. There's no question about that, uh, which is which is infuriating. Um, but look, I, I think it's important that they continue to bring attention to this. You, there, there cannot be any. Um, they can't take it for granted that people just understand the importance of this issue. We have not seen an assault on voting rights like this since the civil rights era, and without question. There needs to be a consistent messaging on this. There needs to be uh, continued uh, efforts, not only at, to, to the Rev's point, it shouldn't just be about out-organizing. It can be a combination of both. There has to be organization on the ground and grassroots efforts. We saw what Stacey Abrams was able to accomplish in Georgia. We see what happens when you have a strong grassroots game, because ultimately uh, voting and elections are run at a local, state and local level. So this has to be a wake-up call to folks in the states to make sure that they're doing what they need to do at their state and local level level to have elected officials that are not going to suppress your vote, that are not going to vote for legislation that is uh, that makes it more difficult for folks to vote, and that you have people there that are doing what they're supposed to do to protect the vote. But at the same time, there should be also national a national outcry, to Neil's point, because what Republicans are doing is absolutely despicable. And unfortunately, Michael, you and I know this all too well, that this isn't new. It's just out in the open now. They're out there saying the quiet parts out right. loud. When you were RNC chairman, you knew what some of the voter suppression efforts were going on out there, and you were trying really hard to make sure that those types of untoward things didn't happen. And it was a challenge for you back then. But now, because of Donald Trump and because of the, the um, mindset that we're in now, it seems to be okay. They're telling us what they're trying to do. Republicans admitted in Arizona that they cannot win if everyone has a legal access right. in, uh, to vote. So... Uh, there, everything needs to be done from both the state and local level. And then, you know me, I'm a conservative. I get a little weary when it gets to the federal level. But I think that there's a way that you can do it with a compromise, like I said, versus just throwing out the filibuster or throwing out the baby with the bathwater. But uh, Democrats need to continue to sound the alarm. And I think good, reasonable Americans who feel strongly about the right to vote, it's one of our most fundamental aspects of our democracy, um, are on board with this. And that needs to be an issue going into the, into the midterms. All right, we're going to leave it there for now. My man, Neil Katyal, thank you so much for starting us off. Reverend Al Sharpton and Tara Setmayer are both sticking around.